Hello, and welcome to Left on the Table, where we try to circle back and go a little bit more in depth with the issues that get left on the table in the Blue Dot in Texas live show. I'm Michi Chick, and today I want to bring up a subject that everyone who is a vet or knows and loves a vet should be interested in, VA benefits. My guest today, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, um, I'm Cobois, um, as known in the group. I'm a veteran, uh, a Marine Corps veteran. I was in 2009, 2014, one tour in Afghanistan. And I have used my benefits and my uh, disability rating, and I'm hoping to spread some of that knowledge, whether you're starting from scratch or whether you're about to get out of the military, and hopefully we can help some people that are in need today. Cool. And, you know, first I want to ask you, how did you find the Blue Dot fan? Um, to be honest, I was uh, doom scrolling on YouTube. I found the channel and I saw the, the Navy hat on uh, John, um, saw, saw the, the hat and just kind of pulled me to it. And uh, I watched the rest of the episode and fell in love ever since. That's cool. I know when I first met you, we got to chat a little bit in the blue room and you just struck me as such a intelligent and thoughtful and you just knew what you were doing <laughs> and you explained a lot of stuff to me um, about benefits and what you did and how you um, signed up. So I was wondering, and you, you also um, accepted my invite to explain that process to us today um, in terms of how you signed up or what you had to do to sign up and how long that took. And I'm just going to let you go ahead and explain some of that to us. Um, so my situation is probably going to be different uh, than a lot of the other veterans in the group or that are in need. A lot of them are starting from scratch. They've been out of the military for years and they finally realize I need to get this done. There's benefits. I need money. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, there, there you were in a little bit different boat than I was. Um, we, when I was in the military in 2009 to 2014, they have a release uh, from the military. They go through a week long process of to do this, do that. And I was very lucky because I also had a really good um, chain of command who told me extra things such as getting your Alta record. And that record is has everything that you've ever done in the military, medically, dental records. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I ended up getting my disability is because they will cross-reference every single appointment that you've been to and everything like that. But like I said, um, I went through the separation program. It takes about a week. They kind of tell you somewhat, hey, these are the programs that you can use. They don't really go too in-depth. I got lucky, and I had a master, uh, master sergeant on the top tell me, get your records, get everything you're su supposed to whether it's medical, dental, but like I said, the ALTA record is the biggest thing if you could find that. Um, if you're currently in service, even getting your ALTA record now, just in case down the road something stupid happens. I know uh, my next door neighbor is a Vietnam veteran and one of the buildings that had his records actually burned down. Oh. And there's pictures of him deployed to Vietnam and this and that, he still struggles to find records and verify service. And that's probably the worst type of situation you can be in is if you don't have records, um, cause I guess he ended up in a flood and it's, um, it's verified. I've talked to some of his family members and his brothers and sisters and his children. And, you know, he, he talks the talk, walks the walk and everything. And the hardest part for him, like I said, is the records. Um, 
starting from scratch is going to be difficult if you don't have anything. If you can go on your base chain of command, where you were stationed, times of service, deployment, any type of injuries are good points to start too with medical records. I know uh, dental was big for me because that's one of the worst things when it comes to the VA and services is if you need health, uh, teeth care, or eye care, you have to be 100% disabled. That's some of the catch-22s that they uh, have as well, um, which is something I would like to explain as well down the road. But yeah, the, the biggest thing, like I said, is um, I, I was helped a little bit and I had somebody that already knew of the process of what to do to leave. But there are websites out there. Um, the first website is benefits.va.gov, and that's for applying. It's just va.gov, Veterans Affairs. It's to be able to apply, um, to merge any type of bene benefits that you would have. Uh, this website almost holds your hand. Within the last two to three, four years, a couple of years, they've really overhauled uh, the website. I'm pretty sure like two years ago, they definitely overhauled the website. And uh, they almost hold your hand, um, whether you're a Vietnam veteran, whether you're a Gulf War veteran, Afghan, uh, Iraq. They um, kind of break everything down Barney style on when, where you served, potential things that you might have come across and because uh, currently I'm actually going through the process of using the PAC deck benefits myself. So um, I did receive benefits in the beginning. I um, applied for benefits and right out, right out of the gate. And me and my best friend both joined the Marine Corps at the same time, went through the buddy program, both seeing pretty much the same things, same injuries, same mental health problems, um, I guess you could say. And because I had support, I had somebody who was prior service. My father was prior service. And he told me when it comes to things in the military and the government, you got to be a pain in the ass. Call them. Same with my uh, old mass sergeant in the Marine Corps. Told me, call these people. I live out of Chicago, so I would call the Heinz Clinic. And they have a records going through there and what status of my disability, what status of my disability. And within three and a half months, I got my first notice that I was rated, got my disability over 60%. And my best friend took him almost three years to get rated um, at the same rate. And then he had to fight another three years to get his full 100, which is what I'm currently doing right now. Now, is that because of those records you were talking about? The um, I believe that's a part of it. I guess he had issues where, what was it, he deployed, I thought it was Kuwait, right next to, e right near Egypt. And I guess they had some problems with that. But to me, it was, the Alta record was a big, huge deal, just because it had everything. Right? It's, my jacket was seven inches tall oh, nice. so yeah so they were able to cross-reference every single thing that I've been through every time I went to the the dock or I did this or that or so they had everything and I think that was a massive factor of right off the bat of yeah he's got tinnitus yeah we're gonna give him that yep he's got knee problems yep he's got bad problems yep he's got this yep and then Everything now is kind of secondaries that I'm fighting and all the stuff from the PACT Act that you wouldn't rate before you get rated right now. And so I already got 20% of that. I'm just waiting for the other 20% to kind of finalize. And that's more of the nitty gritty secondary of you got injured. How's it affecting your life or gotten worse now kind of thing? So oh, if I understand. I did read a little bit on the government VA site, and um, you're right. It's really, you know, there's a lot there. There is a lot there, um, the information. But the PACT Act, if I understand it, it expands health care for veterans who have been exposed to toxic substances, correct? 
That is correct, uh, such as myself. And that's one of the things that I fought for was burn pits, exposure to burn pits, right. whether it's Iraq or Afghanistan. I mean, that's how, what is it, uh, Joe, Bi- uh, Joe Biden's son passed is due to cancer from burn pits. Right. I also, in looking on that thing, it, it looks like it even goes back to Vietnam. It that. does, Agent Orange, and that's one reason why ever since I heard about the PACT Act being third generation uh, military, my dad is a Vietnam veteran, exposed to Agent Orange. He has diabetes, had to have cataract surgery, and he benefited. Right off the bat, they gave him 40%, no questions. Oh, you were exposed? You were within a combat zone where they used Agent Orange? We're not even going to question it. They gave it to him. And it, well, I even read that there was some very specific um, presumptive radiation locations which were cleaned up in the 60s. One was listed as being cleaned up in January 1966 through March of 67. And people who were on that cleanup duty can look into getting some help through the PACT Act. Uh, yes, Camp Lejeune. Um... If you were stationed there, I believe in the 70s, uh, 80s, they have uh, like a time frame and a timeline for veterans that were there and stationed at Lejeune that can get uh, automatic disability. Yeah, and I think the the one I looked at was, uh, it was actually an island because those would have been cleanup areas for testing things <laughs> way back when, and they were cleaning them up in the 60s. Um, so, yeah. So how has the the benefits impacted your life? Um, I mean, I use them every day uh, or, you know, every month, obviously, I get a financial amount. I wouldn't be where I'm at now, obviously, if I if I didn't have that. Um, I use the VA home loan as a, uh, a veteran. I use that to buy my home which is something that allows me to compete with people that can put 20% down on a house. I couldn't do that. It just makes my my monthly rates a little bit higher than if I had a down payment. Um, So there's schooling. You can use benefits for schooling with with benefits. Um, I used them for a little bit, but I've never been much of a, a college student or a school student, so I'll be able to pass that on my kids. Um... So, I mean, there's a massive range of benefits, even free, free fishing license, free fishing licenses, hunting licenses, uh, tax write-offs on my home in the state of Illinois. Uh, The reason I've been fighting is because in the state of Illinois, if you're 70%, you don't pay taxes on your your house. Oh, that's that's I could write I could retire, you know, in a sense at 35 years old because um, I don't know how long my body can handle working. I still have a physical job and my back's thrown out more times than I can count. And I don't know how much longer I can do it. So if I know that I can retire, you know, that that's huge for me. So I can make sure my, my kids have a, a home for the rest of their lives. But it's definitely beneficial. The um, veterans benefits history wise, I did look that up and and they actually started back in like 1776, believe it or not. Um, It wasn't the VA, but they had some benefits back then, which was pretty cool. Uh, Wow. Yeah, it wasn't until 1930, I think, that there was an official VA um, federal agency. And and it has been evolving ever since um, once they realized that more and more people needed more and more help. There also, if you go to some of these sites, there's help for families, too. Um, there's help to help your veteran, to be with them, to um, help them through their day. Uh, there's a lot for children to understand when they have a parent that might have um, PTSD or other things to understand what that is and, and how it affects them. And I, you know, I looked up, um, there actually is a a website called PTSD.VA.gov. 
And if you go in there, there's resources for family and caregivers of vets. If you go in there, there's a whole lot of different uh, links and and things like there's a VA caregiver support um, site, coaching into care. Um, they're helping teach the spouses and, and parents how to care for their vet when they come back. They also have uh, links there for the, the Vet Center Combat Call Center, the Psychological Health Resource Center, the National Resource Directory. Um, there was so much there. There really was. And there's so much for children in there. I was really impressed. They've got an, an interactive workbook for for teens and young children to understand what's going on with their parent. See, and that's that's something that's new for me. Yeah, and I mean, even you, you have children. I know you have children, and you might want to think about looking at the workbooks that helps walk the kids through what what things might be happening with you that you realize it, but you might not realize that the you know how the kids understand it, and it, and it might help. Yeah. Them. Well, I, I know I I have trouble waking up. Um, my both my kids know to tap my feet or to won't touch near my neck or my chest if I'm asleep. So they know to make sure to either make a noise. Um, but yeah, they've you know the the kids see the damage of what happens to the veteran, and even the kids never went to war. So. Yeah. Yeah, they live with it every day. They live with you every day. They don't necessarily understand it, but they they have learned, you know, the skills that you have taught them on how to be with you. Um, but I think going here might give them a little bit of knowledge as to why you need these extra things. Um, as they get older, they'll understand it better, too. And, of course, there's always the the crisis hotlines that I would emphasize, you know, 988. Always. Always. And, and if you call the 988, which is the suicide crisis lifeline, if you also um, press 1 after you connected, that is for veterans. Just press 1, and it will be specifically for veterans. Um, which is um, very when it comes to that... Um... If you're ever looking at the the end of that tunnel and you feel that you can't see the light anymore, um, there's always people to reach out to. Whether it's you're looking at the end of the tunnel or you're just l contemplating that tunnel. Uh, whether you're in a rough spot or not, I know those numbers can help. Um, whether you're right there at your limit or you're beginning to start your limit those numbers um you can talk to people um but even just reaching out to fellow veterans your family even though they might not understand um i would much rather have a veteran uh reach out and ask for help uh, i've lost a couple of brothers um uh, to that dark tunnel and so it's something that I always, I always try to vouch for is utilize that hotline, utilize a fellow family member, a veteran, um, whether it's just I'm having a bad night or it's your anniversary of combat or anything. Um, it's, it's important you reach out. You got to stay strong. So I think we covered all of the questions that I had. And more. I hope so. I hope I uh, helped a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, this is something that has come up before. And, and it's really hard to talk about on the live show because it's kind of, you know, lively, <laughs> a lively show. And it keeps on moving. And it's kind of serious talk. But I do believe everyone is going to appreciate and get something out of this. And um, I personally because I have gotten to know you and I just I can't even tell you how grateful I am to have met you <laughs> through the blue dot um, family. I'm nobody special. I'm just another oh, man trying to figure you know, out his way. 
I know, but you're doing such an Thank exceptional you. job of it, and you're helping others too. So that's just Thank commendable. You. Well, I appreciate you for asking me to come out for the show and uh, to help spread the knowledge and word and open up a, a hand if it's needed as well. If anybody ever needs a hand, whether you're a veteran or not, or a family member and Hey, my dad is fucking stubborn and he, excuse my language. He doesn't want to start doing this or even yourself. I know it took me six months to actually put my foot down and go, damn, I really need to start looking up all my secondary problems, all these things, get a list together and then just file my claim. Just doing that is the hardest part. Putting that first step forward, it, it's cliche, but once you get that ball rolling and you start doing everything and the pieces will fall, they'll fall together and you'll you'll um definitely not regret doing that hard work. So anything I can do to help the people. So Thank it's you never again. too late to get started, is it? Never too late. No, never, never. Well, I'm going to thank you this evening. I'm going to close this up and remind all of our vets out there, if you indeed need help, please, please reach out and go to the va.gov. I think that's quite simply is the easiest thing to do is va.gov. It will connect you all sorts of resources and if you need help you don't have a computer or what there are people that will help you there are just ask ask for help um the one thing that i can do is instead of thanking the veterans in my life i can support the veterans in my life and this is one way I've decided to support the veterans in my life is to give them a voice here on the Blue Debt live show, the um, Left on the Table in particular portion of the Blue Debt live show. And I want to thank everyone for listening to us and I'm going to wrap it up. Say good evening. Thanks again, Koboa, for stopping by. Today's episode was hosted by Mishichik. The music is from John Lawrence. You can find his music over at jhlawrence.bandcamp.com. Left on the Table and all other programming on the Blue Dot and Texas YouTube channel is made possible by the kind donations from the Blue Dot family. If you would like to support our show, you can find out how over at thebluedotintexas.com. Thanks again for listening. Until next time, remember... Keep using your voice.